in Bonsambo, and we are here to welcome you. This is my friend Snaps the Tinker and yeah. Petra Quince and Snuff the Joiner. So if you had joining problem or tinkering problem. And flute. And flute. That's Look at the mellow over there. Yeah, it's me. We're here. <laughs> here because we're here for the same reason you're all here, to see Theseus and Hippolyta's engagement announcement. Yeah. Yeah. All right, this side is going to say, DCS, <laughs> and this side is gonna say Hippolyta. Ready? Here we go. DCS, Hippolyta. DCS, Hippolyta. DCS, Hippolyta. Anyway, yes, they'll be here in a few minutes. In the meantime, we'd like to thank you for coming out here to uh, beautiful. Cleveland! No, Trout Troutdale! Yeah. Somebody got it. All right. We've been doing this in Athens for an awfully long time. Who has never been to see a performing Athenians ensemble show before? Oh, wow. Welcome, welcome. Well, let's be clear about this. There's this other company involved. Who's never seen a performing ensemble performance before? Hey, those are the same. <laughs> same. <laughs> Imagine that. Uh, crossover. We gotta get our lists combined there. Anyway, if you've got a blanket, there's a nice little spot here for two people who really like each other. Anyway, uh, yeah, if you uh, it's okay. Come on. Anyway. Talk about the horrible accident? Not uh, quite yet. Not quite yet. <laughs> <laughs> Most uh, performing ensembles like to tell you to put away your cameras and don't take any pictures, or we'll come out and we'll take them and we'll go oppa. <laughs> but we don't do that. We love it when people take pictures of the performing Athenians ensemble and post them on places like the Twitter and the Facebook <laughs> and put them up there and tag us and yourselves and your friends and whoever you think should be here. And that's um, so yeah, tell all those sort of folks. For those of you who have uh, have known us for a while, we've been doing this for 45 years. 45 years. So pretty much since, since you were in college. Yeah, 45 years. Before I was. And the only way we've been able to do that is <coughs> generosity and support of people like you, our lovely, beautiful, wonderful, generous audiences. And uh, we have we have a friend over here. You want to introduce our friend? Those of you who have seen one of our performances before, tell all the other folks, who is this? Boxy! There we go. Boxy has an affinity for portraits of dead politicians and other public personages. Yeah. <laughs> Particularly Ben Franklin. Who is not a president. <laughs> not a president. Well, you know, or Grant would be Grant, yeah, he'd be a good one. Or Jackson, <laughs> Hamilton, whoever. <laughs> right in the slot in the top. But we'll talk more about that at the intermission. We should really give the nice people something if they give us some help. Oh, wait! What? What? Wait! What? I have great news! Wait! There was a horrible accident! Oh, no. Oh, well, nobody that wasn't the great news. News. No, the great news was an ox cart hit that tree over there. Also wow. not great news. No, I'm getting to it. It took out that tree and a gelato truck, apparently. Oh. But, oh, but, but, the, the caretaker of the ox cart that crashed into that tree over there uh, gave me these. That was the back of that thing, and this is the front of the thing, and now you can do that. Ooh. And we decided... We decided. Wow. I decided that uh, <laughs> that you can have one of these in adult sizes or children's sizes for free with a twenty dollar donation. Yay! Hey, what if people didn't bring like actual cash? Somebody was trying to convince me that this was money. Oh, we found a magic thing on the ground wow. that we can put. In. Hey, this is 2014. It ain't all that magic. This is not real, this is not real platinum. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we can do that in a little while, right? All right, great. Well, before we go any further, I'd like to introduce a representative of the city state of Troutdale, Miss Molly King, uh, to, to say a few words.
A problem. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh! One other thing before we get started, we found a couple of children wandering around the stage. Where? Uh, a Miss Gwen Murray, a Miss Livia Reiner, and a Miss Lindsay Boisvert. Does anybody know these these young people? Yes, yeah, a yeah. couple over there. Yeah. Uh, we we put them to work because we needed some help. What did you do with them? Well, I, I sent them off to find a rehearsal space. Okay. We got to rehearse this new play. Well, we got to rehearse our new play. You're right. You're Is right. Is another one of your epics, Petra? Yes. Oh, Where where'd you send them? I sent them off to the Palace Wood. No, oh, not the Palace Wood. Yes. No crazy oh. stuff happens in the Palace oh. Wood. So we might not see them again well, for I a little while. I'm sure they'll be fine. I'm sure they'll be perfectly fine. Don't worry about it at all. Anyway, uh, yeah. Uh, while we're while we're waiting for Theseus and Apollo to show up, do you mind if we do a little music for you? We've been practicing. All right, let's play some music. Oh! 
Nuptial hour draws on apace. Four happy days bring in another moon. But oh, methinks how slow this old moon wanes. She lingers, my desires. Like to a stepdame or a dowager, long withering out a young man's revenue. Four days will quickly steep themselves in night. Four nights will quickly dream away the time. And then the moon, like to a silver bow new bent in heaven, Shall behold the night of our solemnity. Hippolyta, I woo thee with my sword, and one thy love doing thee injury. But I will wed thee in another key, with pomp, with triumph, and with reveling. Happy hey, Theseus, our renowned duke. <laughs> Thanks, good Aegeus. What's the news with thee? Full of vexation come I with complaint against my child. My daughter, Hermia. Stand forth, Demetrius. <sighs> my noble lord, this man hath my consent to marry her. <laughs> Stand forth, Lysander. <clears throat> ah! <laughs> Ow, 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 my gracious duke, uh, uh, this ow. man hath bewitched the bosom of my child. Thou, thou Lysander, thou hast, thou, <laughs> thou hast given her rage. Thou hast interchanged love tokens with my child. Thy moonlight, thou hast at her window sung with feigning voice versus a feigning love and stolen the impression of a fantasy with, with, Bracelets, bracelets of thy hair, rings, gods, conceits, knacks, trifles, <laughs> oh, nose gays, sweetmeats, <laughs> messengers of strong prevailment in unhardened youth. <laughs> With cunning thou hast built my daughter's heart, and her obedience, which is due to me, to stubborn harshness. And, my gracious duke, be it so she will not hear before your grace consent to marry with Demetrius. I beg the ancient privilege of Athens, as she is mine and all my rights to her. I will to marry with either to marry with this young man. <laughs> or be sent to her death. According to our law. And <laughs> immediately provided in this case. <laughs> what say you, Hermia? Be advised, fair maid. You, your father, is as a god, one that composed your beauties. Yea, and one to whom you brought as a form in wax by him imprinted, and within his power to leave the figure or disfigure it. Demetrius is a worthy gentleman. So is Lysander. Uh, in himself he is, but in this kind, wanting your father's voice, the other must be held the word. I would my father look for with my eyes. Out of your eyes must with his judgment look. I do entreat your grace to pardon me. I know not what power I am make bold, nor how it may concern my modesty in such a presence here to plead my thoughts. But I beseech your grace that I may know the worst that may befall me in this case if I refuse to wed Demetrius. Either to die the death <laughs> or to abjure forever the society of men. Therefore, oh, fair no. Hermia, Question your desires, know of your youth, examine well your blood, whether, if you yield not to your father's choice, you can endure the livery of a nun. For I to be in shady cloister mute, to live a barren sister all your life, chanting faint hymns to the cold, fruitless moon? Thrice blessed they, that masters sow their blood, 
to undergo such maiden pilgrimage. But earthly are happy as the rose distill, then that which withering on the virgin thorn grows, lives, and dies in single blessedness. So will I grow, so live, so die, my lord, ere I yield my virgin patent of right to his worship, whose unwished yoke my soul consents not to give sovereignty. Hermia, take time to pause. And by the next new moon, the sealing day betwixt my love and me, for everlasting bond of fellowship. <laughs> Upon that day, either prepare to die for disobedience to your father's will, or else to wed Demetrius as he would. Or on Diana's altar to protest for I <laughs> austerity and single life. Lend sweet Hermia. And Lysander, yield thy crazed title to my certain right. You have her father's love, Demetrius. Let me have Hermia's. Do you marry him? my love, and what I have, my love shall render him. But she is mine, and all my rights to her I do estate unto Demetrius. <laughs> oh, uh, um, uh, I am, uh, my lord, as well derived as he, as well possessed, my love is more than his. My fortunes every way is fairly ranked, if not with vantage, as Demetrius, and which is more than all these boasts can be, I am beloved of beauteous Hermia. Why should not I then prosecute my right? Demetrius, all avouch it to his head, made love to Neter's daughter Helena, and won her soul, and she, sweet lady, dotes, uh, devoutly dotes dokes in idolatry upon this spotted and inconstant man. My Sander! I must confess I have heard as much, and with Demetrius thought to have spoke thereof, but being over full of self-affairs, my mind is loosened. But come, Demetrius, and Aegeus, come. You must go with me. I have some private schooling for you both. For you, fair Hermia? Look, you arm yourself to fit your fancies to your father's will, or else the law of Athens wounds you up, which by no means we may extenuate to death or to a vow of single life. Come, my Hippolyta. <laughs> what cheer, my love? Demetrius and Aegeus go along. I must confer with you of something against our nuptials, and confer with you of something nearly that concerns yourselves. With, with duty and, and desire, desire, we follow you. No, my love. No. Why is your cheek no. so pale? How chance the roses there do fade so fast? Be like for want of rain, I could well but team them from the tempest of mine eyes. I me, for aught that ever I could hear, could ever read by tale or history, the course of true love never did run smooth, but either it was different in blood. Oh, cross do I to be enthralled to love? Or else miscraft in respect of years. Oh, spite too old to be engaged to young. Or else it stood upon the choice of friends. Oh, hell, to choose love by another's eye. Or if there were a sympathy in choice, war, death, or sickness did lay siege to it, making it momentary as a sound, swift as a shadow, short as any dream. Brief as the lightning in the calling night that e'er a man hath power to say, Behold, the jaws of darkness do devour it up. So quick, bright things come to confusion. If then true lovers have ever been crossed, it stands as an edict in destiny. Then let us teach our trial patience, because it is a customary cross. As due to love as thoughts and wishes and dreams and tears. Poor fancy's followers. A good persuasion. Therefore, hear me, Hermia, I have a widow aunt, a dowager of great revenue, and she hath no child. From Athens is her house remote seven leagues, and she respects me as her only son. There, gentle Hermia, 
may I marry thee. And to that place, the sharp Athenian law cannot pursue us. If thou lovest me, then steal forth thy father's house, and tomorrow night, in the wood, a league without the town, where I did meet thee once with Helena, to do observance to a morn of May, there will I stay for thee. My good Lysander! <laughs> I swear to thee by Cupid's strongest bow, by his best arrow with the golden head, oh. by the simplicity of Venus' doves, oh. by that which niches souls and prospers love, mm. and by that fire which burned the Carthage queen when the false Trojan under sail was sing, by all the vows that men have ever broke, uh. in number more than ever woman spoke, uh. in that same place that was appointed me, tomorrow truly will I meet with thee. Oh! Yeah. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas, love. Demetrius! Oh, look, here comes oh. Demetrius! Oh. Demetrius! Oh. Ah! <laughs> Godspeed, fair Helena! Whither away? Call you me fair, that fair again, unsay! Demetrius loves your fair, oh, happy fair. <laughs> your eyes are load stars, and your tongue sweet air, more tunable than lark to shepherd's ear, when wheat is green, when hawthorn buds appear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sickness is catching, oh, were favor so. Yours would I catch, fair Hermia, ere I go. Mm. My ear should catch your voice, my eye, your eye, my tongue should catch your tongue, sweet melody. Were the world mine, Demetrius being baited, the rest I'd give to be to you translated. Oh, teach me how you look, and with what art you sway the motion of Demetrius' heart. I frown upon him, yet he loves me still. Oh, that your frowns could teach my smile such skill. I give him curses, yet he gives me love. Oh, that my prayers could such affection move. The more I hate, the more he follows me. The more I love, the more he hateth me. His folly, Helena, is no fault of mine. None but your beauty would that fault were mine. Oh, take comfort! He no more shall see my face. Lysander and myself will fly this place. Oh, before that time I did Lysander see, seemed Athens as a paradise to me. Oh, what graces in my love doth dwell, that he hath turned to heaven unto hell. <laughs> Helen, to you our minds we will unfold. Tomorrow night, when Phoebe doth behold her silver visage in the watery glass, decking with liquid pearl the bladed grass, a time which lovers' flights doth still conceal, through Athens' gates have we devised oh. to steal! And in the wood, where often you and I, upon faint primrose bed, were wont to lie, emptying our bosoms of their counsel sweet, <laughs> there Lysander and myself shall meet. And then from Athens turn away our eyes to seek new friends and stranger companies. <laughs> Keep word, Lysander! We must starve our sight from lover's food till tomorrow to midnight. <laughs> I will, my Hermia. What? Oh. <laughs> Helena, adieu. <coughs> As you on him, interest stood on you. Oh, how happy some or other some can be. Through Athens, I am thought as fair as she, but what of that? Demetrius oh. thinks not so. He will not no. know what all, no. oh, but he do know, and as he errs, yeah. doting on Hermia's eyes, so I, admiring of his qualities. Things base and vile, holding no quantity. Love can transform to form and dignity. Love looks not with the eyes, but with the mind. And therefore is winged Cupid painted blind. Oh, nor hath love's mind of any judgment taste. Wings with no eyes figure unheedy haste. Therefore is love said to be a child. Because in choice he is so oft beguiled. As waggish boys in games themselves forswear, so the boy love is perjured everywhere. 
For ere Demetrius looked on Hermia's eye, he hailed down oaths that he were only mine. And when this pale some heat from yeah. Hermia felt, oh, so yeah. he dissolved and showers of oaths did melt. I will go tell him of their Hermia's flight. Then to the wood will he tomorrow night pursue her. And for this intelligence, if I have thanks, it is a dear expense. But herein mean I to enrich my pain, to have his sight thither and back again. generally, man by man, according to the script. <laughs> Here is the scroll, with every man's name, which is thought fit to all to play in our interlude oh. the Duke and the Duchess on his wedding day at night. Oh. <laughs> you are best to tell him what the play treats on, then read the names of the actors, and so grow to a point. Mary, our play is the most lamentable comedy. Eh? And most cruel death Ooh. of Pyramus and Thisbe. Oh, oh, very good piece of work, I assure you, and a Mary. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, Patrick Quinn's, call forth your actors by the scroll. Masters, spread yourselves. Oh. Answer as I call you. Nick Bonham, the weaver. Ah, ready? Name what part I am for and proceed. You, Nick Bonham, are set down for Pyramus. Oh! What is Pyramus? <laughs> a, a, a lover or a tyrant? Oh, a lover oh. that kills himself most gallantly for love. Oh, that will ask some tears in the true performing of it. If I do it, let the audience look to their eyes. I will move stars. <laughs> <laughs> I will condole in some measure. <laughs> to the rest. Francis? Yeah, my chief humor is for a tyrant. Uh, I could play Ericles, really, or point a terror cat in to make all split. Uh, oh, oh, oh. The raging rocks and shivering shocks oh. shall break the locks oh. of prison gates, <laughs> and Phoebus' car shall shine from far to make. And ma, the foolish fates! Oh. Yeah. Oh. Bravo. Bravo. This was Francis? lofty. Now to the rest. Francis? This was Heracles' vein, a tyrant's vein. Yeah. Lover is more You're condoling. <laughs> Francis Flute, the bellows man. Here, Petra Quince. Now, you must take this beyond me. Oh, oh. oh what's this be? A wandering knight. Hey. Oh, it is the lady. The Pyramus must love! Oh, hey, but not play a woman. I have a beard coming! No, oh, that's all one. You shall play it in a mask, and you may speak as small as you will! When I may hide my face, let me play this be too! I'll speak in a monstrous little voice! Oh, yeah. This be! This be! Oh, Pyramus! My lover dear! My this be dear! Uh, 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 <laughs> now, now, you must play Pyramus and flute, you this. Well, proceed. Tom Snappity. Here, Petra Quince. You, Pyramus' father. Oh, huh? oh. Myself, Disney's father, and Snug, the joiner. You, the lion's father. Oh. And I hope here is a play finished. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, Have you the lion's part written? If it be, I pray you, give it me, for I am slow of study. Oh, you may do it extempore, for it is nothing but roaring. Oh, let me play the lion, too! I will roar! 
Oh, I will do any man's heart good to hear me. I will roar. Then I will make the Duke say, let him roar again. Let him roar again. You should do it too terribly. You would fright the Duchess of the Ladies that they would shriek and that were enough to hang us all. Every mother's son. I grant you, friends, that if you should fright the ladies out of their wits, they would have no more discretion but to hang us. Oh, oh, but I will aggravate my voice so that I will roar you as gently as any sucking dove. I will roar you as to any nightingale. <laughs> you can play no part but Pyramus, for Pyramus is a sweet-faced man, a proper man, as one shall see on a summer's day. Oh, a lovely, gentleman-like man. Therefore, you must needs play Pyramus. Well, I will undertake it. Oh, 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 oh
flouncing Amazon, your buskined mistress and your warrior love. To Theseus must be wedded, and you come to give their bed joy and prosperity. How canst thou thus for shame, Titania? Glance at my credit with Hippolyta, knowing I know thy love to Theseus. Didst thou not lead him through the glimmering night from Paragonia, whom he ravished? and make with him fair eagerly break his faith from Eraodne and Antiope. Oh, these are the forgeries of jealousy. <sighs> and never since middle summer's spring met we on hill, in dale, forest, or mead, by paved fountain or rushy brook, or in the beached margent of the sea, to dance our ringlets to the whistling wind, but with thy brawls thou hast disturbed our sport. Therefore the winds, piping to us in vain as in revenge, have sucked up from the sea contagious fogs, which falling in the land have every pelting river made so proud they have overborne their continents. No night is now with him or Carol blessed. Oh, and therefore the moon, governess of floods, pale in her anger, washes all the air that rheumatic diseases do abound. This same progeny of evil comes from our debate, our dissension. We are their parents and original. Do you mend it then? It lies in you. Why should Titania cross her over on? I do but beg a little changeling boy to be my henchman. Set your heart at rest. The fairy land lies not the child of me. His mother was a votress of my order, and in the spiced Indian air by night, full often has she gossiped by my side. But she, being mortal, of that boy did die. And for her sake, I do rear up her boy. And for her sake, I will not part with him. <clears throat> How long within this wood intend you stay? Pretend till after Theseus' wedding day. If you will patiently dance in our round and see our moonlight revels, come with us. If not, shun me and I will spare your haunts. Give me that boy! <laughs> and I will go with thee. Not for thy fairy kingdom! <laughs> no! <sighs> Fairies, away! We shall chide down right if I longer stay. Well, go thy ways! Thou shalt not from this grove till I torment thee for this injury. My gentle Puck, come hither! <sighs> Thou rememberest, since once I sat upon a promontory and heard a mermaid on a dolphin's back, uttering such dulcet and harmonious breath that the rude sea grew civil at her song. And certain stars shot madly from their spheres to hear the sea maid's music. I remember. That very time I saw, but thou couldst not. What? Flying between the cold moon and the earth, Cupid all armed. A certain aim he took at a fair vestal throned by the west, and loosed his love shaft smartly from his bow, as if to pierce a hundred thousand hearts. But that I might see on Cupid's fiery shaft, quenched in the chaste beams of the watery moon, and the imperial votaress passed on, in maiden meditation, fancy free. Yet marked I where the bolt of Cupid fell. It fell upon a little western flower, before milk white, now purple with love's wound. And maidens call it love in idleness. Fetch me that flower. The herb I showed thee once. The juice of it on sleeping eyelids late will make or man or woman madly dote upon the next light creature that it sees. <laughs> Fetch me this flower, and be thou here again, ere the leviathan can swim a lead. I will put a girdle round about the earth in forty minutes! Having watched this juice, I'll watch the Tanya when she's asleep, and drop the liquor of it in her eyes. The next thing, then, she waking looks upon, be it on lion, or bear, or wolf, or bull, on meddling monkey, or a busy ape. She shall do it with the soul of love. And 
ere I take this charm off from her sight. As I can take it with another herb. I'll make her render up her page to me. <laughs> but who comes here? I am invisible. <laughs> And I will overhear their conference. Is Lysander and fair Hermia, the one I'll slay, but the other slayeth me. <laughs> Thou toldst me they were stolen into this wood, and here am I, and wood within this wood, because I cannot find my Hermia. Hence, get thee gone, and follow me no more. <laughs> you draw me, you hard-hearted adamant, and yet you draw not iron, for my heart is true as steel. Leave you your power to draw, and I shall have no power to follow. Do I entice you? Do I speak you fair? Or rather, do I not in plainest truth tell you I do not, nor I cannot love you? Oh, and even for that do I love you the more. Hermia! Okay. Your spaniel, and Demetrius, the more you beat me, I will fawn on you. Use me, but as you use your spaniel, spurn me. Strike me, neglect me, lose me. Only give me leave, unworthy as I am, to follow you. What worse or place can I beg of in your love? And yet a place of high respect with me than to be used as you use your dog. Tempt not too much the hatred of my spirit, for I am sick when I look on you. And I am sick when I look not on you. You do impeach your modesty too much to leave the city and commit yourself into the hands of one that loves you not. Trust me in the opportunity of night and ill counsel of the desert place with the rich words of your virginity. Oh, your oh, virtue oh. is my privilege. For that it is not night when I do see your face. Nor doth this wood lack worlds of company. For you and my respect are all the world. How then can it be said I am alone? when all the world is here to look uh, on me. I'll run from thee and hide me in the brakes and leave thee to the mercy of wild beasts. Oh, the wildest have not such a heart as you. Uh, uh, if you will, the story shall be changed. Apollo flies and Daphne holds the chase. The dove pursues the griffin. The mild hind makes speed to the tiger. Holy speed when cowardice pursues and valor flies. Oh, I will not say I trust it. Let me go! <laughs> oh, if thou follow me, do not believe what I shall do thee mischief in the wood! Fie! Uh, you uh, uh, the town, the field, you do me mischief! Fie, uh, Demetrius! Your wrongs do set a scandal on my sex! We cannot fight for love as men may do! We should be wooed and we're not free to woo! Tell me! Somebody help me! <laughs> <laughs> I'll follow thee! and make a heaven of hell to die upon the hand I love so well. <sighs> Demetrius! <laughs> Fare thee well, nymph. Ere he shall leave this grove, thou shalt fly him, and he shall seek thy love. <laughs> Hast thou the flower there? Welcome, wanderer. Aye, uh, there it is. I pray thee, give it me. I know a bank where on the wild thyme blows, where oxlips and the nodding violet grows, quite over canopied with luscious woodbine, with sweet musk roses, and with eglantine. There sleeps Titania some time of the night, lulled in these flowers with dances and delights. And there the snake throws her enameled skin, weed wide enough to wrap a fairy in. 
and with the juice of this I'll streak her eyes and make her full of hateful fantasies. <laughs> Take thou some of it and seek through this wood. A sweet Athenian lady is in love with a disdainful youth. Anoint his eyes, but do it when the next thing he espies may be the lady. Thou shalt know the man by the Athenian garment he hath on. Effect it with some care, that he may prove more fond of her than she upon her love. And Look thou, meet me ere the first cock crow. Fear not, my lord, your servant shall do so. and a fairy song, then for the third part of a minute, hence, some to kill cankers in the musk rose buds, some war with rare mice for their leathern wings to make my small elves coats, and some keep back that clamorous owl that nightly hoots and wonders at our quaint spirits. Sing me now asleep, oh. then to your offices and let me rest. Loo la loo la 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 bye. Everybody, loo la loo la 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 bye. Loo la loo la 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 bye. Loo la loo la 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 bye. You spanning snakes with devil tongues, thorny hedgehogs. And newts and blind worms do no wrong And come not near our fairy queen Loo la loo la lullaby Loo la loo la lullaby Philomel with melody Sing in our sweet lullaby Loo la loo la lullaby Lula, Lula, lullaby. Never harm, nor spell, nor charm comes our lovely lady night. So good night with lullaby. Lula, Lula, lullaby. Lula, Lula, lullaby. It's uh, way. Uh, uh, <laughs> Ah, 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 now, all is well. What a loof stand, sentinel. What thou seest when thou dost wake, do it for thy true love take. Love and languish for his sake. Be it on ounce, or cat, or bear, hard, a bower with bristled hair. In thy eye that shall appear, when thou wakes, it is thy dear. Wake when some vile thing is near. <laughs> faint with wandering in the wood, and to speak troth, I have forgot our way. We'll rest us, Hermia, if you think it good, and tarry for the comfort of the day. Be it so, Lysander, find you out of bed, for I upon this bank will rest my head. One turf shall serve as pillow for us both, one heart, one bed, two bosoms, and one trope. 
Nay, good Lysander, for my sake, my dear, lie further off yet. Do not lie so near. <laughs> Take the sense, sweet of my innocence. Love takes the meaning. In love's conference, I mean that my heart unto yours is knit, so that but one heart can you make of it. Two bosoms interchained with an oath, so then two bosoms and a single troth. But then by your side, no bedroom me deny, for lying so, Hermia, I do not lie. Oh, Lysander <laughs> riddles very prettily. Mm -hmm. Now much be true my manners and my pride, if Hermia meant to say oh. Lysander lied. But, gentle oh. friend, oh. for love oh. and courtesy, oh. lie oh. further off in human modesty. Oh. Such separation may well be said, becomes a virtuous bachelor and a maid. So far be distant. And good night, sweet friend, thy love near altar to thy sweet life end. Boop. Amen. Amen to that fair prayer, say I. Then end life when I end loyalty. Here's my bed. Sleep give thee all his rest. With half that wish, the wisher's eyes be pressed. <laughs> Through the forest have I gone, but Athenian found I none, on whose eyes I might have proved this flower's force and stirring love. This is he, my master said, despises the Athenian maid. And here the maiden, sleeping sound in the dank and dirty ground. Pretty soul. She durst not lie near this lack love, this kill courtesy.